Okay, now we're starting chapter one, and the thing you'll notice about whenever we start a new chapter is we're going to begin every chapter with a lesson zero. And lesson zero sounds strange, but what it is is prerequisite knowledge or information that you will need to be pretty strong in in order to be successful in the chapter. So let's do a little bit of this review, get strong, get confident, and this is some stuff from fifth grade and sixth grade. Okay, first question, this is a question in your notes. It says, what is a ratio? Hopefully the word ratio is one that is familiar to you. A ratio is a way to compare two quantities by using division. Okay, so uh, we do have a question here. How do we write ratios? This is not in your notes, so you can just kind of stop and pay attention. If I take a look at this picture here, I've got some apples in a basket. Let's say that I want to write a ratio of red apples to green apples. And there are three different ways we can write that ratio. The way that we are going to do this is the way that you see ratios written most frequently. It's fraction form. So fraction form means it's going to look like a fraction. We're going to have a fraction bar here. In my numerator of my fraction, I'm going to put the red apples. That's two. In the denominator, I'm going to use the green apples, and from what I can see, there are four green apples. So my ratio of red apples to green apples is two to four. We read this guy as the word two, okay? Not two-fourths, like a fraction. We're reading it like a ratio. So two to four. Now, uh, because this is in fraction form, we do want to simplify to put it in, you know, its simplest form. And to do that, we can divide by the GCF. The GCF of 2 and 4 is 2. And that leaves me with a simplified ratio of 1 to 2. So the ratio of red apples to green apples is 1 to 2. We always want to simplify our ratios. Now, there are two other ways to write this ratio that you may see show up. Uh, sometimes you'll see them written on the side like that with the colon in the middle. That's 1 to 2. Sometimes you'll see the same kind of setup, but the actual word two will be written there. Okay, so all three of these are different ways to write the same ratio, one to two. Okay, there's a really fast review of ratios. What I'd like you to do right now, these are some practice problems from your notes, okay? I do want you to take a look at this. I want you to write these three ratios. I do want you to write them in fraction form because that's our most common, and that means that you will be simplifying each of those fraction ratios, okay? So right now, I want you to press pause, pause this video, do those couple problems, and you can check back when you're finished with the answers. Okay, so if you have unpaused the video, here are your three uh, solutions to questions one, two, and three. First one is the ratio of adults to students. That's 24 adults to 180 students. We have to simplify that. We can divide by the GCF, which is 12, and we get the simplified ratio 2 to 15. If you didn't divide by 12 right away, that's okay. Maybe you divided by 2, and then 2 again, and then 3. Um, I just wanted to show the GCF instead. Uh, number two, ratio of students to buses. There are 180 students, four buses. If I reduce this by dividing by four, I get the ratio 45 to one. So I want to leave the one there. A lot of you are probably tempted to write that as the whole number 45, but remember a ratio has to compare two things. So the ratio has to have a numerator and a denominator so we can compare students to buses. Uh, in a the next video that we do, we are going to see that this is actually a very special type of ratio. But today, we'll just leave it like that. And the last one, buses to people. This one gets a little bit tricky because there's no category in our table that says people. So we had to have the, the good sense to kind of say, okay, well, students and adults are both people. So I'm going to add them together. That gets me 204 four buses, 204 people. If I simplify, I get the ratio 1 to 51. So remember, these are ratios. We're going to read them with the word 2. 1 to 51. 45 to 1. 2 to 15. Okay? 
Number four, these, this is also in your notes, determine whether the two ratios are equivalent. Okay, well if ratios are equivalent, that means that they simplify to the same ratio. Okay, I'm going to show you two ways to get this job done. Okay, the first method will be the simplify method. Nice, quick, easy. Simplify. Okay, so if we take our first ratio, 20 nails for every five shingles, that's 20 nails to five shingles. I can simplify that by dividing by the GCF of both numbers, which is five. And that gets me the simplified ratio four to one. Okay, next ratio is 12 nails for every three shingles. I'm gonna simplify that as well. GCF of those two numbers is three. <clears throat> that also gets me the ratio four to one. So by this method, we can say yes, those two ratios are definitely equivalent. Okay, that is method one, the simplify method. Method two is the cross multiply method. Okay, if we want to cross multiply, this is nice and quick as well. A lot of students like this method. Um, cross multiply. So we take our two ratios and we write them here, 20 to 5 and 12 to 3. Notice I didn't put an equal sign in there because I don't know yet. Well, I'm going to pretend I don't know yet whether they are um, equivalent or not. So to do this, we cross multiply. We multiply. Let's undo that. We are going to multiply 5 times 12 and 20 times 3 and see what we get. 5 times 12 is 60. 20 times 3 is also 60. Since my cross products are equal, then I can say yes, those two ratios are equivalent. Okay, go ahead and take a look at number five. Now you can choose whichever method you'd like to do number five with. You can do it with the simplify method or with the cross multiply method, uh, but I do want you to press pause and I want you to do this question and check your answer when you are finished. Press pause now. Okay, so you've unpaused, which means you have hopefully finished number five on your own. Number five, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm not going to show you the work because it's done exactly like number four. So the answer is they are not equivalent. And if you did this with the simplify method, that's pretty clear. Uh, they do not simplify to the same ratio. If you did it by the cross products method, it's pretty clear. They do not get the same number when we cross multiply. Um, one symbol that we often use to show things that are not equal or not equivalent is this guy right here. It's an equal sign with a slash through it. So you can use that sign to show that they are not equivalent. Okay, so that's it for today. Here is your to-do list. First, I want you to finish number six from your notes. This is a question where you're going to write your own problem. Um, write your own problem. We'll talk about them tomorrow in class. Next, you are going to start your flashcards for chapter one. First flashcard, first word is the word ratio. We have a definition. Uh, use it, make a flashcard and then move on to chapter one, lesson one, when you are ready.